Our next question is from uh, Edmund, a friend of Michael and I. Uh, Edmund lives in the UK. He has uh, <laughs> been to a couple of uh, schools. I met Edmund when I was out at Michael's school, I think, what, two years ago? Yeah, it's been a couple years ago. Nice guy. But anyway, here's what Edmund's question is. Uh, when we play tug with a dog and they chew the item or uh, not have a full hard bite, does this problem uh, transition into bite work with a helper later or does it not have any relation at all? Wow, it's a, it's a good question, a, a, a complicated question. We're, we're asked this all the time and it's uh, an ongoing debate in the protection sport community. If you talk to a lot of decoys and, and trainers of protection sports, they'll have differing opinions on this topic. So there are lots of people that think that um, while the dog is playing with their handler, with a tug or a ball, that they're learning the uh, behaviors that they're gonna do in protection work and that the, and the habits they learn there carry over to their protection work, how they bite on the sleeve or on the suit in protection work. Um, this is a very inexact science. So what tends to happen, in my opinion, is that as little puppies or young dogs, pre seven, eight months old, their initial experiences with protection work and play are very similar. So some of those habits could carry over. So with my young puppy, when I'm playing tug, I certainly want to encourage them to clamp down and hold on and not chew around and, and have, a, have a nice full grip and all those sorts of things. That said, those two activities, playing with the handler and doing protection work, rapidly diverge after puppyhood. And there are many, many dogs that play with their handlers, very munchy on the toy, they chew on the ball, they chew on the tug, but have very nice biting on the equipment in the protection work. So I think they become very different activities as the dog matures, so I worry less about it and I, uh, in play, and I worry more in play about whether or not the dog is having a good time with the handler. Many handlers, in an attempt to make the puppy, or the young dog, or the older dog even, play the way they want them to play, focusing on their grip and their strike and all these things. By doing that, they take the fun out of the activity for the dog. And at the end of the day, our play as a handler with the dog is an obedience reward, ultimately. It's a game that I'm playing with my dog. I'm building value in a reward event. And so I want the dog to enjoy that activity. And if my dog is a naturally kind of chewy dog, and I put all this energy into fo fo forcing that dog to bite calmly, that dog may no longer like that activity, and it loses power as an obedience reward. So I don't obsess about it. I basically, I'll pay attention to it. I'm playing with a young dog. I say, hmm, I would like you to bite better, so I try different techniques to get them to bite better when they're tugging with me, but I don't obsess about it. I worry about that in the protection work, and I worry about the dog's attitude about play more than actually how they're using their mouth in play. That's excellent, because it fits into uh, the training DVD that we're filming here on motivation. Uh, most of the customers know that we've done uh, videos on food training and training with tugs. The video that uh, Michael and I are filming this week is how to use the principles from our food DVD and our tug DVD to manage the motivation and play in a dog. It's really going to help a lot because we we spent from 9 o'clock yesterday morning until almost 6 last night filming. And it's going to be a great DVD. It's going to help a lot of people right into what we're talking about right here. It's a good deal. So, bye, Edmund. I hope we... Uh, Take it uh, easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're doing well.